my name's Claire and I'm going to be talking about sexuality, intimacy and disability. I come at this from a place of the lived experience which means that I sustained a spinal cord injury from the age of 17. So I've had a number of years now to uh, I guess live with this injury. I also have a master's in health science and I looked at um, intimacy with couples where one has had a traumatic injury and lastly I mentor and I was a youth counsellor uh, for people who had spinal cord injuries and who also experienced other traumas. So that's where my knowledge base comes from. Now the questions that I'll be answering tonight were from uh, basically anyone or everybody who looks at my Instagram page claire.freeman.nz so that's how I've compiled this bunch of questions that I'll be talking through tonight. Okay so let's get started. Question number one is my sex drive the same as pre-injury? Yes it is. It did take a while to come back but once it came back, it came back baby. <laughs> and it's, it's very healthy, thank you. Question number two. Do I have sensation below my level of injury? Yes I do, because I'm an incomplete injury. So my spinal cord wasn't completely severed. So there are uh, messages going through my body. I may not have uh, be able to move physically, but I do have sensation, so yes, I do. I was very lucky. Number three, would I date someone who uses a wheelchair? Yes, and I have. Uh, I do admit that initially I was quite hesitant, um, but that was basically because of my own insecurities and prejudices. Once I worked through those, I had a fantastic relationship. So really, it's not about the disability, it's about the person, and you find that out pretty quickly. Okay. Number four, has my injury driven me to explore or adopt any fetishes? Uh, not personally, I can't say I've adopted any fetishes. Uh, I did find out about a, a genre, a group of people who were attracted to women with my disability. And I've got to say I did find that very confronting initially and quite disturbing. But then I realised that I was more disturbed about the fact that they liked parts of my body that I was not so keen on. So they were the disabled parts of my body, my hands, my legs, um, and the way I move differently. And that's what they're attracted to. And after speaking to, you know, many of them, I just realized they're just normal people, but they just have a different attraction. And they can't help that just as much as I can't help the fact that I don't, I move differently. So yeah. Okay. Question number five. Do guys look at me differently being hot and using a wheelchair? too sure I do know and I wouldn't actually say I'm hot I do know I put you know a lot of effort into my appearance and that gives me a lot of confidence so maybe that's what uh, makes people a little bit sort of like oh, what's going on there uh, because I do come across as quite confident when I'm out and about um, and perhaps people find that a bit unusual okay all right question number six do I experience autonomic dysreflexia during sex now, dysreflexia is a condition that people with my level of injury do get. So anyone with a cervical injury, so a neck injury, uh, basically if you've got anything going wrong with your body, um, you, your blood pressure can go really high and if you don't fix the problem, then you can have a stroke. So it's quite serious. And I have heard of some people that do experience dysreflexia uh, when they do engage in sex. Um, I have heard though that with lubrication and if you're very gentle then that's not too much of a problem. Okay, number seven, why are my legs so toned? My legs are toned because I get a lot of spasm and that's basically movements that I can't control. Uh, they tend to happen mainly at night time when I'm in bed. My legs decide to go for a marathon run and yeah I just leave them to it and I sleep. And when I wake up, my legs are nice and toned. So yeah. Question number eight. Having less feeling, is the brain more engaged during intimacy? 
Absolutely. And that's the best thing I've learned since having this injury is that my brain is my biggest sex organ and you know, it, sex is just like it was before the injury. In fact, I'd say it was even better because I'm more in tune with my body thanks to my brain. <laughs>
Number 17. I'm a T4 paraplegic, so I've got no feeling and I struggle to have an orgasm. Do I have any tips or should I just lower my expectations? So the orgasm is a tricky thing and I know a lot of people who don't have any sensation below their level of injury, particularly guys, do struggle with, um, you know, the orgasm. Uh, my advice would be to um, maybe look at what you can feel above your level of injury. I have, well, I do know somebody who, um, when their nipples are stimulated, they actually have an orgasm. And they say, even though they have no feeling below their level of injury, which is about from their chest down, um, they do have nipple sensation. And they, um, if you stimulate, well, they say that if, if they're stimulated enough, then they can actually ejaculate from that. And they say that it's like having a really intense headache, but a really good one. So I guess it's also just, yeah, experiment. Keep experimenting. Okay. And last question, question number 18. Why is there a perception that disabled people are asexual? Well, I think we challenge the heteronormative value system. Um, you know, we're different, and different can be scary. Um, often anything unknown is generally feared. So my advice is that it's actually up to us to tell the world that, hey, we are sexual beings too. Uh, okay? So look, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. I really enjoy talking to you and thank you so much to everyone that sent uh, in all my questions. So have a wonderful evening and um, yeah, talk to you guys later. Bye.